Hello everyone, welcome to another CSS tutorial. In today's lesson we're going to be covering relative and absolute positioning. And I think you're going to have some fun in this lesson, uh, in my opinion. This is one of the aha moments when you're learning CSS. This is when you really begin to feel that you have complete control over the styling of your page. So let's dive right in. We'll start with relative positioning. So for example, Let's say our goal is to move this heading level one element down five pixels. And we don't want any of this content to move. We simply want to push this heading down five pixels. Let's head over to our CSS, create a new rule to target the heading level one. Uh, our first property will be position. We'll give it a value of relative. And from here, we can sort of push and pull the element in whatever direction we choose. Uh, so we're going to say move down from the top five pixels. So if we refresh, we see that it jumped down five pixels. It did not push down any of the content. So we, we really had fine grain control over how we wanted to affect this heading. So that's relative positioning in a nutshell. It's that simple. You are using properties of top, left. So as you would assume, if we write left five pixels, it's going to push the heading from the left. Um, conversely, we could also say right instead of left. So now we see that it's uh, closer to the left by five pixels. And obviously instead of top, we could say bottom. So relative positioning is essentially a way to take an element without removing it from the natural flow of the page and just push or pull it a bit to the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. And it doesn't affect the rest of the elements on the page. I think that's the most important point to drive home. So just to make this abundantly clear, let's take this paragraph and move it down quite a bit, just to illustrate a point. So if we write a rule, P, position relative, top, 150 pixels. So when we refresh, we see that the paragraph is shoved way down, and it did not affect the height of our container, our image didn't know to move down. The rest of the page is acting as if no change occurred at all. So it really gives you fine grain control. Let's move on to absolute positioning. So let's put this paragraph back to where it was and give ourselves a goal. Let's say our goal is to take this image of the dog and have it sit right here. So as you can see, this is sort of an unorthodox spot for the image. Uh, it usually would not sit there within the normal flow of the page. It's violating the bottom footer. This is a great example of what absolute positioning can be used for. So let's head over to our CSS file. And this is the image rule. We're going to add a new declaration. Now since this is your first look at position absolute, let's start with something as basic as possible. Top zero pixels, left zero pixels. So if we refresh, we see that the dog is in the very top left corner of the page. So if we would have used position relative and used top zero left zero, the image would have been exactly where it started out. So right away, we can see that position absolute is radically different from position relative. Position absolute aligns the element in relation to its parent element. So the dog's parent element is our entire page. And that's why when we said top zero, left zero, it's putting it in the very top left. Now, if we say bottom zero, right zero, we see that we're closer to our goal. Our goal is to have the image sit right about here. And now it's aligning itself to the very bottom right. However, watch as I resize our browser window. Since we wrote bottom zero, right zero, the image knows to always sit at the very bottom right of its parent. Um, so you're probably thinking, okay, but its nearest parent is our container element. So why is it not aligning itself to our container element? Why is it aligning itself to our entire page? And that's a great question. And if you're just starting out with CSS and you don't know the answer to it, it's easy to assume that position absolute is useless. Uh, but let me go ahead and show you the solution. So we want this bottom zero pixels, right zero pixels to be in relation to the container, not the entire browser window. 
And in order for that to happen, we need to add a property to our container. We need to assign position relative. Now if we refresh our page, we see that the image, when we write bottom zero pixels, right zero pixels, is in relation to the container. So just to recap, when you want an absolute positioned element to honor the positioning of its parent, the parent element must have position relative. So enough rambling. Um, we wanted the image to sit more about right here. So now it's just as simple as editing these values. So instead of bottom, how about bottom negative 75 pixels? And how about instead of zero right, 20 pixels to the right? And there you have it. So don't be afraid to use negative values. Uh, that's what allowed us to get the image to sit below the footer. Uh, if we would have just wrote zero bottom pixels, it would have aligned itself perfectly like this to the bottom of the container and footer. Uh, but we wrote negative 75, it pushed it down here. So you can really start to do some creative things with your layouts now that you understand position relative and position absolute. And I know that for a lot of web designers, when they begin to understand these two concepts, it is really their aha moment. And they just, they are so excited at the possibilities. So thanks for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye. I almost forgot to mention that I would like to see some requests. Um, so if you have any ideas for future tutorials or if there's any topic that you find confusing or difficult and you would like some guidance on it, please leave it in the comments. I'll definitely take a look and try to make my next few videos based on the comments. So anyways, yeah, I'd love to hear some feedback and thanks again for watching. Bye.